Hear that? Whoo wee! Woke up alive again. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> She's looking at me like I've got something for her and wagging her tail, but I don't. Hey, hey, puppy. She's gotten bigger. This dog is freaking huge. Huge doggy. So I have another prescription uh, eye gel <laughs> snotty crap that Sarah has to put in my along the inside of my eyelid. It's just disgusting. I'm so sick of this shit. And then she's got this silver something silver spray sprays in my face. Bunch of other shit. But anyways, clearing up. What a nasty, nasty go. It's weird for me to. It's weird for me to accept the fact that all these other, everything going on inside your head is connected to your eyeballs. You know, I, I'm thinking, because I'm breathing in and the air is like burning this one spot way back here where it feels like your air tube comes in, you throw it back in there and hurting to swallow and making you wake up and shit. And now they're saying, no, it's all connected. The same infection is moving around in your head. I'm like, what? Creepy, gross, right? Very creepy and gross. But anyway... Getting better, 10 days now. <laughs> 10 days. Uh, what do we got? We got a lot. Quick little fact, quick little, a quick little somewhat unrelated fact that they can share. It's gonna take two seconds. Is Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom, isn't that the governor of California? And the criminal that runs this country both graduated from the World Economic Forum School of Leadership. There you go, sleuths. That doesn't answer a few questions for many who are curious. I'll leave it right there. It's all you need. Creepier than shit, is it not? Now, what do we got here? We got an email from our friend, Rob Duvall. Recent. I respect the knowledge and information that the native population shares with others like us from Europe, Europe or Scandinavia. My grandfather came here from Denmark. However, we all have to be careful to not give the hybrids more power and recognition or the benefit of a false historical importance they deserve. I know more than anyone that the hybrids can and do use influence and capacities we don't possess. <clears throat> but here's where I draw a distinction. That does not make them more ancient or have more in the way of rights or dominion by historical misgivings or misinterpretation on our parts, nor by those who are native. The hybrids take what we give them, Steve. And the same goes with natives, giving them too much reference, reverence or mistakenly slash accidentally opening the door to giving our dominion to them. We have to keep them in check, which means all of us. Was it good that the guy who was lured to get some, to go get some sandwiches from the quote kids end quote he heard sound advisement, sorry, was it good that the guy who was lured to go get some sandwiches from the quote kids end quote he heard sound advisement from the native shaman or spiritual leader? Of course. It is a developed awareness that without, we can make serious mistakes. But we have to be careful to not give them ground or rights here where those rights just do not exist. I give no quarter. I do not revere them, but rather tolerate them. But I don't hesitate to push back hard when they cross the line with me. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's a difference between respect and fear. I respect that they are here. But if they don't respect me back and they start pulling their bullshit, I'm going to act swiftly to put them back in another box where they belong. And you know how it progresses if they don't capitulate. I do not respect them for their wisdom or what many refer to as their ancient presence. They are not the original or natural people of this planet, as many insist. We have been around for about 200,000 years. Them, a few tens of thousands of years nor do they have natural rights or dominion over us. That part is written. Some of the misguided judgment of them can be blamed on the continuance of oral histori histories, 
many, culturals ha many cultures have. Over time, the true history is watered down if it was ever known to begin with. The nature of those hybrids is known, but their place with respect to the Creator and with us is not necessarily. There, that ambiguity should not be treated any other way than being ambiguous. There is no special knowledge of origins that is only known by a few of the native population, but rather information that is not known at all other than the spiritual nature of some of these beings many refer to as cryptids. The spiritual nature was learned through mistakes made and consequences becoming known, resulting from those mistakes over long periods of time. That information is learned, but the origins of these hybrids is not taught. It resides in records thousands of years old that these native populations had no access to. It is not part of their oral history, and therefore is ambiguous. They just do not know. I'm just giving you those important distinctions to ponder. There are extremely solid lessons to be learned by the natives, but origins are not one of them. All right, man. Appreciate you chiming in. Appreciate you chiming in. As you know as well as I do, everybody's got to uh, everybody's got to listen from all angles and come up with their own assumptions and learn and figure it out. Hold on one second. Getting a bit of a glare from the morning sun out there through the window. And there you go. Take from what you will, you guys. But if you are listening and learning, put that on a shelf, right? And refer to as you go along. I appreciate the time you put in, Robert. And I appreciate you sharing with us, man. Big time. Yeah, I, I don't. I I do myself. I have. I hold. I have respect for everybody. Right. I have respect for everybody. I don't care what color you are or what part of the world world your blood originated. I don't care. What I care about is how how kind and respectful you are to your neighbor, each other. That's it. And I, a lot of people believe that because they may have native North American indigenous blood in their veins, it somehow may have an effect on how much, or remember, I'm just waking up and we're at the coffee table together. <laughs> I don't recite or rehearse anything or pre-think it before I come here. From what I've learned and observed, it doesn't matter where your blood comes from. Every single human being has been and is being treated the same when it comes to having experience with these beings. Right? The patterns are the same across the board. It doesn't matter where you originated from, what color you are, it doesn't matter. Everybody's having the exact same experience is what I'm saying. All right? So, I do respect the indigenous people. But we are all indigenous people. Every one of us is indigenous to this planet. Every single one of us. Right? Anyway, I'm babbling. Let me read some more before I open up my mouth again and let my brain flow, because my brain's not really functioning <laughs> smoothly right now. I think you're picking up what I'm attempting to put down. Now. We are all equal. We're all equal. This is titled, Dematerialize. Mr. Isdall, I've heard stories from Miss Short of the Sabe people being killed. I heard you say that you believe these beings can teleport from one place to another. My mind goes to, quote, how can they be killed if they can do this, end quote. The creatures far outclass us in the physical realm. The government surely has these Sabe in custody, but only as dead bodies. Doubtful the government could reverse engineer this capability from a dead Sasquatch, but if they have already, we're in trouble. Too many accounts of the Sabe people being killed, and as many that say they can teleport or dematerialize. This opens up a whole new can of worms regarding the Sasquatch people. End of email. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. That can of worms has been open since the first time humans have been aware of them. And that's a fact. 
that can of worms, it's all in the same can. It's only, uh, for whatever reason, various human, human beings and groups, individuals have been trying to keep that, a lid on that portion of this big can of worms. And they have been pretty successful at it, right? For the most part, mainstream wise they have, but not in private conversations with people who see and know and, sh and are willing to share. How can they be killed? You know, it, I don't know if they teleport. I haven't a clue about teleportation myself. I don't think I've said that exact sentence. I do, obvi it's obvious they can become, they can make themselves not be seen by human eyeballs while standing in front of us and view of us. That's a fact that I can't change. I didn't come up with it. It's a fact that not too long ago I would have scoffed at. But I can't ignore my fellow brothers and sisters, human beings. Otherwise, I'm an idiot, right? But this does make sense to me. Okay, how many times do I mention, all right, so a lot of people see them and they start swaying back and forth. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. It's like a stressful move. They're swaying back and forth down. They're swaying back and forth looking at us, right? Started running the second we looked at it. Got up, shot to his feet, and took off faster than hell, right? Um, also, people have heard a being go <laughs> upon realization they're seeing each other. So, <coughs> excuse me. So that's telling me that that's possibly letting my brain know, maybe, that while they're in view of us in their physical, who knows if they are leaving their physical presence or not, I don't know, maybe they are good at bending, reflecting light that we see, that we need to see items with. Maybe they're just good at that, right? And maybe they are there in their physical state the whole time, I don't know. Maybe when they know we can see them is also the point of when we can possibly kill them. And that might make sense for why they act so, oh shit, right? Caught my pants down, I could be killed right now, I gotta get out of here. That might make sense. Makes sense to me. Why else would a 10, 12, 14 foot tall being five, six feet wide of the shoulders, five feet wide of the shoulders, biceps as big as a large man's thigh, be so terrified from a human being looking at them. Well, what scares us? What scares us is what we don't know about. And what also scares us is what can kill us. Right? So I'm pretty certain they aren't acting so scared because we might go steal their lunch money. I think it's a little more serious than that, right? So it would make sense to me, possibly their reaction to us seeing them physically is letting them know that also they are right now vulnerable to being killed by us. Wouldn't that make sense? And that's why they go, oh shit, Whew, out of here. Swaying back and forth. They're getting a little anxious. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I think they can see me. I think they can see me. Oh shit, shit, I think they can see me. Maybe, right? Don't know. Are we going to know? I think so. I'm pretty confident we're going to know. <laughs> so there you go. And without a doubt, that's one thing for me on my journey is, all right, it's like, I can't help myself sometimes, but you know, you just can't kind of, you kind of, for me, I just get kind of frustrated when I watch people. I'm just, you know, I'm banging on trees, man. I'm banging on trees. I'm studying these footprints and there's dermal ridges. And then apparently, you know, they'll reach forward and they'll grab a branch and pull them through the forest. Who gives a shit? It's a hundred years later. Move on. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to know. I want to know what can we do? That's really burning. My gut is steering me and my curiosity is, is nonstop for a long time. I want to know what we can do. And obviously, obviously, if we had that skill, evil would perish. Unless evil got a hold of that skill first, right? Maybe evil is in, maybe evil human beings are in possession and awake to the fact that they can do that too. Who knows? Maybe they, maybe, maybe 
And that's possible why the shit shows going on in the world today, because maybe the dark side has enhanced their natural skills and kept it away from the good people. Am I making sense? You never know, right? But think about it. I've already admitted it flat out. If I was to be taken around a, a round table of knowledge, sitting shoulder to shoulder with 12 to 14 foot tall, hairy, man-like beings, and they're teaching me and giving me a quick course on how to do that, you know what I'm going to do the first day I graduate from that course? I'm going to clean up some bad people. I'm not even going to... I wouldn't even pretend I'm not going to. If I could obtain the skills and fine-tune and enhance them, the skills that these forest people, or whatever you want to call them, have, I'm cleaning up some serious bad people. That's the first thing I'm going to do. With great enthusiasm. Right? So it makes sense why... If, maybe, we can do the same things that these other people can do. That makes, that makes it uh, really understandable why we get stuffed into the public school system. The second we get to, a, what's the average age? What is it, five? Five years old is when they finally pry us away from our family unit. And they start educating our kids, not you. You don't get to educate your children. Think about that one. You don't get to educate your children. And it's just accepted that's normal at this point, just at this stage of the game. That's accepted and normal across the board that you don't get to educate your children from five years on. Why not? <laughs> right? How many people have been asked that question? How come? I, you know what? I think I'm going to educate my kids. I got this. Uh, no, you don't. No, no, you can't do it correctly. We can. And we're going to. And if you don't let us, we're going to take your kids away. All right. I'll shut my mouth. Coffee's kicking in. You get my point. You give me those skills. The dark side's going to have a real bad time. Real bad time. I want to know what we can do. I really, really want, really want to know what we can do. What we should be able to do. I can find out. All right, here's another one titled The Shadow. Well, Steve... I'm on my 83rd trip around our sun. Earlier in my life, I served with the 82nd Airborne Division. After that, I served with the state police, which I retired from. That's all I can tell you about myself. And that's plenty, sir, and appreciate you, and I have much respect for you. Early in my life, I spent a lot of time in the mountains of Pennsylvania, western part in Somerset County. This is my early teenage years. My father would tell me, never cross the road into the big woods. Well, guess what? They would leave to go visit relations, and I would stay home and wander across the road. Got lost many times. One night that I was coming back, I made a camp in the middle of a field with a little larger fire than I normally would build. As I sat in front of the fire off to my left, I noticed a shadow. A shadow being casts across the field to the wood and onto the wood line. A little garbled there, a couple typos. As I sat in front of the fire, off to my left, I noticed a shadow being cast across the field to the wood and onto the wood line. I stood up to see who was coming as the shadow moved from left to right and got larger in front of the fire and crossed to the right back onto infinity. Since I had a good view of the field and the wood line, I saw nothing that could have made the shadow. I stayed close to the fire the rest of the evening till morning, scared. Yes, and still had to stay. Till this day, I am still puzzled. I have no idea what made the shadow move like a person. Thank you, Steve. Have a great day. All right, there you go. Thank you, too. And I hope you have a super duper day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, let's just say they are here in the physical presence with us, which and they are bending the light, the reflective light that we need to see objects. They are possibly manipulating that. Makes sense. Do I believe they are here physically 24-7? Me personally? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I do not think they are here physically all the time. That's just me. 
And I'm not dictating that. That's just for me and my puzzle. I do not believe they are here physically 24-7. Do I believe they can bend and manipulate the reflective light that we need to see them? Yes, I do. It's too obvious. If you listen to each other. Here's another one titled, What Did I See in St. Andrews, New Brunswick? <clears throat> oh my God, only knows. That's where Sarah and her family are from. Who knows? <laughs> Just kidding. But I know they're watching. I know they're giggling. Hey, Stephen Crew. I thought about writing to you on this for a bit. But my experience seems a little lame. Unresolved, so to speak. But dude, why not? But dude, why not, right? Should you read this? I hope it's in good health and spirit. And that is a positive contribution to the narrative. I've reread and edited the next the text below for clarity. Also, my wife listened and helped to clear up my vernacular engineering background. So I hope the recounting does connect with clarity. LOL. The weird advice points I added. Call it poetic license, and I am a bit of a character. It is long. Oops. I want it to be detailed and highlight the emotions of the encounter. I hope it is worth your read. I figure a good 10 to 15 minutes is a lot to give any man you don't know, lol. So I tried to give you more than that. Spent some time on this email trying to get the encounter down coherently and clearly. Uh-oh, you're making me nervous, man. Sometimes we've had some people go in a little too high detail, and it got embarrassing for them, and frustrating for us, and they had to write back later on and apologize. <laughs> so let's see, let's see how this goes. I may have to skip ahead. By the sound of your warning, I may have to skip ahead. Many email their platitudes to you, Steve. Let me add a little more to start. For the countless hours of listening and watching, enjoying the fruits of your labor. Thanks, man. I believe it is rather obvious that you are making a difference in what for many appears to be a world turning upside down. Good on you. I am writing with one-sided familiarity. As like many, I suppose, after listening as much as we do, I got a friend in Steve, eh? You seem to handle this well, not letting it get to your head. Keep it up. No one wants an orange. Keep it up. No one wants an orange on a toothbook hanging around. Have you seen a Sasquatch? Well, I'm writing in hopes that there are listeners like myself who have, whom have had numerous weird things happen in the woods. But in particular, I witnessed and experienced something one night that I just can't shake. So I told my wife, my two daughters, and nobody else. Because, to be frank... I don't need the sideways looks after the recounting of my interesting story to peeps that don't have a clue about the subject matter, right? <laughs> Who cares? F em. For context, a little about my background and location, etc. provides some pedigree. East Coast, New Brunswick, born and raised. I had two older brothers, and we lived in a restored farmhouse on a 100-acre piece of ground, surrounded by great folk and lots of woods. These woods and fields were our playground. Anyone that has a kid in the 70s and 80s in this kind of setting would know what I mean. Started hunting and fishing, being the game carrier long before I was allowed to carry a gun, lol. Went on to get the university education, but to this day the woods are my place to go for refuge, peace, and contentment. Well, best place I know to go and sort shit out. Yes, I know dangerous place, says everyone. Watch out for bears and moose. Well, yes, of course, we are in New Brunswick, and come on, getting eaten by bears around here is not exactly common. And I like to play with the moose a little too much. Swamp donkeys, as the old-timers called them sometimes. Point is, I'm not scared of the woods, but I respect it. Getting hurt in there by yourself is my main concern, as I often go for five to ten kilometer treks exploring a new stretch of New Brunswick, following trails and making some, if it's a good trip. To the main experience, I need to get off my chest. Oh, that's it. I realize as I type, it bothers me a bit. So, should this get read and someone identifies with a statement, then maybe I will feel a little better. Quote, what the F did I see that night in St. Andrews, New Brunswick? End quote. Already longer winded than intended, so let's spit it out. Mid-October 2021. It was a huge day, man. I had just gotten married to my bride. She is beautiful. No, I don't deserve her. We had a couple of nights booked at, in the Algonquin Hotel. First floor suites in the new wing. First night, once my wife was settled at about 11 p.m. 
The night owl in me was not ready to sleep, and yes, my wife knew I was itching to go for an explore, as I call it. I know St. Andrews well, and I believe you know it also, Steve. A seasonal sur tourist town. I think about 2,000 population. Your wife is from this area, I believe, or is it? Or is it? St. Stephen. Anyway, point is, my route was unplanned, but I was eager. I decided to head to the main wharf, hang out in the night air, and see what direction felt right for a strut. It was a beautiful night. There was a mist in the air, and the sky was mostly clear, and the moon was almost full. Things had that fall moonlight shine. I was within 50 yards of the hotel when I ran into my first batch of deer. No shit. Maybe you can back me up here, Steve, or a listener in the area. The deer situation in St. Andrews? These guys are everywhere, lol. People's lawns, bunches of them. Some solitary, bucks and does, all whitetail. It is one of those things that is uncommon enough to sound like a story, but it is not. Anyways, lots of deer, and you can get close. It's so neat. It took about 15 minutes to a half an hour to get downtown, and it was dead. No cars, no people, almost surreal. Perfect for this guy. Wandering around, taking it in. I felt like a bit of a creepy movie set, lol. Maybe seeing two or three other people, if that. Found a place to sit down, out on the wharf, and take in the Bay of Fundy at night. Freaking gorgeous. I may have had a little... I may have had a left-handed cigarette, but definitely a few right-handed variety. And I decided to listen to your latest YouTube. Someone had an experience that had bothered them that rather it had bothered them that rather than embrace a sighting they took off the other way with irrational fear weird advice number one never scoff at someone else's experience it could be it could soon be your own in that moment i decided i was going to walk to that beautiful hole in the golf course a little par three that would just be the perfect distance to get that walk in nothing to fear and honestly i was in town with herds of practically tamed deer so off I went, but I remember putting up a prayer. Yes, I believe, and it was a bit of a strange one. Following this subject as a healthy skeptic, I was not able to really state that there are big dudes in the woods without seeing them. So I just expressed that it would be really neat to have an experience. And yes, under my breath, I was saying, and I won't be scared, famous, famous last words, right? So, running a deer all the way down, I walked along. I think it is Front Street, the main drag down by the water anyway, walking towards the golf course, which is quite close. I figured I had a two to five kilometer track on the go, return trip that is. Once I got to the first hole I could access from the road, I veered off to walk onto the cart paths. There was night dew on the grass, quite heavy. I assumed it was okay to be on the course that night, but wanted to stay off fairways and greens, as my understanding is that this can be harmful to the grass. And also, it wouldn't be long, and I'd have wet feet, as I was just in my sneakers. Again, seeing lots of deer along the way. That is something St. Andrews should have advertised. But it was a really quiet night. And with the light in the open from the moon and the shadows were dark, magical. The cart path was into lots of shadows cast by the woods along the golf course holes. Jumping deer in the dark will startle the best of men, but at this point I was getting kind of immune to it. So I got about 400 yards from civilization, but still feeling cocky safe. I'm in town, no worries for a seasonal country boy. But then I was looking at this really dark tunnel off of a cart path heading into the woods. Yeah, a little spooky. A black hole kind of thing. I had my phone and turned the flashlight on. More for safety, but boom, night vision gone. I walked in a bit, 20 yards or so, the path bending enough I could see to the end of the, quote, tunnel, end quote. I stopped and turned off the flashlight. I wanted my night eyes back. That took a few minutes, maybe. I don't know wasn't long, and I continued walking slightly upslope 100 yards or so along this stretch of cart path through the woods. As I came out, I began to see the next hole quite clearly in outline. A T block was elevated on a mound to the left, with the cart path staying close to the woods and in the shadows. 
So as I cleared the woods on the path, the tee block is about 20 feet above my head. The woods, 10 feet to my left. And I'm in this dark shadow, but coming out into the open. That's when something started yelling like a rabid skunk to my right, only about 20 feet away in the woods. Well, I would like to have seen my reaction because I'm sure it was funny as heck. I'd had to have cleared the ground, immediate adrenaline reaction, and fight or flight kicks in, and true to form, I faced the noise, hunched down, and growled. I know I'm a weirdo, but it's what I do. Kind of a snarl, right? And then it peters out, and I start to laugh at myself. But the noise continued, and I focused, and it dawned on me that it was probably just a pissed off raccoon, or some such, and I heard the running which sounded like some typical varmint probably laughing over his shoulder at me as it took off. I started laughing again, talking out loud. Yes, a great defensive mechanism. It works for you. Work it. It works if you work it. Sorry. I started to fumble in my pockets for a lighter and my smokes, doing this while I headed straight up that tree berm directly away from the woods. Do be darned. Weird advice number two. When startled in the woods, back up. It's probably about to happen again. So I get about halfway up this tea berm in about 10 rapid steps and see the tea block edge and moonlit sky above me. The treetops on, on the other side start to show as I climb and cross the shadow line from the trees behind me. So now I'm in the moonlight, all clear. I do a sideways veer so I can have my side to the woods where the noises still are and look back in that direction just to make sure that racket in the woods hasn't decided to start coming at me. Five to ten more steps kind of paralleling the middle ridge of the T block. I keep moving further away towards the most open spot I can see. About 30 feet in front of me, the ground and cart path I was on slope up to meet the fairway of this tee block I'm climbing. I pull my attention off from the woods. That's when I get my second jump. About 15 feet above me in the middle of the tee block, something moved fast. Not run or fly or such, or some such. Too fast, really, but there was a blonde and grayish something that just went like a car zoomed off the top of the T above me back towards the back of the T block. I jumped again. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me, Anne was starting to move before my feet hit the ground, Steve. I bolted up that last 20 feet and then I turned and looked back. Nothing's there. Not even any marks on the T block grass. Heavy dew, remember? I immediately felt foolish as heck and I started laughing again, out loud as I love a good scare, man. Gets the blood pumping. The noises in the woods below had stopped, and I finally got over the smoker feels, those erratic jerking motion of hands and arms flapping at pockets to dig out smokes in a lighter, trembled a smoke out of the pack, laughing at my silly ass, and lit up. Oh. Keeping an eye behind me, I started to look around a bit. The direction I wanted to continue was, you guessed it, in the same direction of that thing I just imagined or deer, or whatever. Nothing to be scared of, right? But the path went back into another stretch of woods. Another dark tunnel walk appeared in my future plans. I'm stubborn, but I also need to, excuse me, take a couple of minutes to calm down before heading on this next stretch. Not with imaginations in my head. So I wandered away from the shadows a bit further, up this hole I was on, looking up at the stars in the sky. It's truly incredible, beautiful night. So I, so I quite quickly started to settle down. Smoke done. I turned back, walked towards the shadows and the woods. No flashlight. My night vision was going to recover my manliness here, if anything else. But as I go closer to this clear line of shadow on the car path, still 20 yards from entering the woods, I stop. Like five feet in front of this dark line, everything in me lit up. Do not go in there. No voices or clear thought. More of a no way, man, heebie-jeebies. My body just kind of seized up in an irrational fear. 
I turned to walk back and started to feel relief immediately. It was weird. Without really stopping, I swung back around saying, nope, I got this. And about five feet in front of that shadow line, boom, it happened again. Do not go in there. In what felt like retreat, I stopped and considered, but soon found myself backpedaling the wrong way. I walked to get 30 yards this time, chastising myself. Stopped again in the moonlight to recoup. Part of why I don't like recounting this event is the dealing with irrational fear. There's not my usual self, shall we say. I got startled, but, but not... I get startled, but not often scared. No bragging, just happens to be the case. At this point, I decided to give it another smoke. Not needing one, but what the heck. <laughs> so as I stood in the open and looked in the other direction, it dawned on me the big open field behind me was several golf holes wide in expanse. I almost did chicken out, as heading that way would be a pleasant sight assuredly, nice and open. But that stubborn country boy was saying, no way, man. Pull up those bootstraps and head down towards the par three on the ocean. I turned back for the third time and with some speed built up my pace towards that shadow line. When I got about 10 feet from that line, something in the woods ahead and to the right, well, something took off with a weird yelp noise, but it was up in the trees, just about say 10 feet. It was pitch black woods from what I could see, but I know the trees were there. I didn't jump or nothing. I just flipped around and skid out of my butt back 30 yards. And I said something like, so much for that ocean view for F6. An immediate feeling of relief. Like no fear anymore. A weight kind of lifted. I didn't even care about what was right back there behind me. Again, probably just a raccoon. Weird fact number three. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's not over till it's over, baby. This time I kept walking right out in the open. I turned around a few times and just felt good. I owned my reticence. Had given it the college try and was quickly writing off the experience as small critters and my imagination having a little too much free reign. I decided I would head back to the hotel, but before I did, I wanted to see the view of the top of this prominence on this new hole I was on. It was a situation where you need to get closer to the top of the slope off in order to see the entire fairway. I figured it would be a nice view. This hole sloped off towards what would be roughly 30 degrees to the right from the cart path I had wanted to follow. But it was a good 200 yards across, so I walked further towards the center of this hole, but now not really worrying about my getting startled. However, I was now getting wet feet and feeling guilty as I really didn't want to harm the grass. In such a, it's such a beautiful golf course. I was not going to walk the fairways, just wanted to take a look. I crested this hill and was immediately struck with the amazing view. Big sky, New Brunswick night. <coughs> Excuse me, breathtaking. I stood there for a couple seconds, looking up and out, feeling better by the second from my recent scare. It's one of those moments that everything, including yourself, is just perfect. Oh, nice change from a couple of minutes ago. Then I looked down along the fairway. About 150 yards ways, golfer estimate, there was a hillock, and it was the rough, tall grass, from what I could tell, a mound of that upward-sloping fairway the golfers all loved to miss. On top of this were two distinct black shapes, not deer. The next four to five seconds is imprinted in on my mind. I started wrestling with what I was seeing. It looked like two people, one sitting, kind of laying on their side and the other was just sitting up. It appeared they had their back to me. I remember thinking, maybe they have cameras out here and security is looking for me. However, this is like a flash thought. They quickly left because, well, they were too big. Again, not deer, must be bear. I was really focused on zoning in on these shapes, trying to do the math. And again, it was probably only a second or two since I had spotted them. And I wasn't scared, which was a nice change. Just surprised. Weird fact number four, things can change in a heartbeat. The dark shape on the left stood up. 
Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. What I had thought was facing away seemed to have noticed something. And why did I feel like it was looking at me? It was like watching someone squatting and then they just stand up. But this was too big to be a dude. And the way the outline of it was like a bit of a cone head, no neck and big shoulders. And the movement was so graceful, question mark. I could see that it was darker than the grass around it, obviously, but at this point was starting to realize the color wasn't pure black. But in the moonlight, difficult to peg. So if you remember at the beginning, I had put out to the big guy, be pretty neat to have an experience. I'd say be careful what you pray for. This part of the recount will require you to trust that how I reacted now is on this part of the recount will require will, will we require you to trust that how I reacted now on is completely opposite of what I would have expected or my family members. When this outline shape stood up, within a second, I was four steps the other way. My back to the threat, and I started talking out loud. Don't mind me, just an idiot here. Doopity doopity do. Yeah, what was I thinking? I didn't look back. I had maybe half a second look after this shape stood up, and here I am putting my back to a threat, or whatever the heck, I wasn't going to allow myself to think about. I was fighting this overwhelming urge to just bolt which, as a 50-year-old, would have been more dangerous than anything, perhaps. Nope. For a good 100 feet, I just walked brisk, talking out loud, calling myself an idiot, just out for a stroll, meaning no harm, see you later. Catch you at the beach, kind of talk. Clearly just a lunatic, out for a moonlight walk. So, from startled, first, first snarling racket in the woods, to irrational fear, afraid to walk into the dark, to startled, yelping noise in the tree, to peace, what of you, to almost panic, what did I just see? A bit of an emotional roller coaster. So now here I was for the first time in full retreat close to running, just seconds away from having it all worked out, appreciating that amazing view, an enormous sense of gratitude for God's nature. Dude, what a ride. When I finally allowed myself to look back, which I had been fighting, just a trail of my footprints in the dew, nothing chasing me. That was the first time I really allowed that thought, as I knew I was on the edge of panic. Not something I allow, lol. Like things had quickly flipped out of control, and I didn't like it. I didn't feel relief at seeing nothing as much as you might think. I just kept trucking and still felt that I was in danger. Irrational. Bears are not going to eat me on a golf course or anywhere else in St. Andrews. I did start considering what I had seen, however, and realized I had a good half a kilometer to people, maybe more. And that had to be a huge bear that just stood up on its back legs. No grizzlies in New Brunswick, but I just must have miscalculated its size, etc. I walked on. I walked on all the high spots in the middle of the fairways, trying to work this out in my head while I walked. Yeah, it's funny, that's a natural reaction, right? Because whoever's on top wins. Whoever's down below loses. In war, and in nature, and in, hunt and in hunting. Was I imagining that something is moving very fast off to my right a couple of times? I just told myself, deer. When I got to a green about halfway, the first street lights appeared in the distance. I stopped and tried to collect myself. I turned back and watched the 300 yards or so I had just turbo walked. And I could make some, out something moving back and off to the left now and then. But just glimpses and sticking to the shadows. Then directly to my left, another blurry motion and something running. Again, I said, dear, but stopped trying to explain it and double timed it the rest of the way. Not stopping until I reached a sidewalk. Straight path all the way. To wrap the telling of the experience up, or why I would email you to recount, perhaps. I've had too many weird experiences in all in sorry, I've had too many weird experiences in the woods. All the old timers say it. 
quote, weird stuff happens in the woods, end quote. Sums up a lot of conversations without going into detail. I believe that weird things happen in the woods. After all, crazy to say that it could be something other than that what we label, quote, weird, end quote, unexplained. So after this experience, I've tried to stop saying I'm a believer in this or that phenomenon, which was my go to cop out. It is either one, you believe, or two, you don't. And I believe you, Steve. I believe that there are too many people experiencing a wide variety of common strangeness for it to be anything other than what they say it is. I've not seen Patty, the famous Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot, but that video at least remains to be explained. What more do I need for proof, I suppose? But if you're reading this, I wonder if anyone connects to this statement. I cannot reconcile what I saw that night, but I believe that it was unbelievable. What did I see? Anyone who wants to disrespect me, bring it on. Better on my shoulders than all the people that get disrespected for what seems to me, most times, the recounting of a traumatic experience and undeniable personal sighting. I am the one that keeps trying to tell myself I saw a couple bears. I wish my inner voice would stop calling bullcrap. That wasn't no bears. Ever hear that before, Steve? If it was not bears, so be it. I don't tell this to convince people I've seen Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever. One way or the other, my story remains just that, a story. A recounting of events that have led to an internal question. But wowzers, what an incredible experience for it to be raccoons and a couple of bears, eh? So to everyone out there that has joined the club in a return, isn't it amazing? How many pictures, videos, or witness accounts will take it before this subject will it take before this subject is taken off the crazy train list? I love the idea of Sasquatch. So admit on an internal bias. I love the idea of these beings, but why are they not being celebrated or at least warned of? Protected species status seems weak to me. I think maybe it should be the other way around. Maybe they just need a little space to be left alone. They seem to be scared of us, or as some account, at times a little angry. You say there are no experts in this topic. I like that. No experts here. Anyway, Steve, starting to rant a bit. Just keep it up, man. If you have any questions, let me know. My name and reputation isn't the point here, as I would hope to not have the hubris to believe my position on this topic or any events related to it really matter much. But whatever. If someone asks me, all I saw was probably a couple bears, right? But if they really want to talk about it, I believe. MGBWY, that's May God be with you. Charles Carr, Marysville, New Brunswick. There you go. Well written, man. Appreciate the time you and your wife both took to send that to the people. Oh. How many people that are familiar with that area in Canada are going to come forward and say, I seen it too. Saw it in broad daylight looking at me through the bushes while I'm swinging my freaking one wood. You never know, right? But that's how everybody comes forward. Somebody's got to kick it off like you just did for that area. Right? Now that you did, who else is going to? That's crazy about the deer around there. How many deer are there? But anyway, there you go. You know what you saw. You might know not you might not know exactly what or why, but you know what you saw. That's why you're here, right? Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Hmm. What's going on? Anyway. We're gonna have I'm gonna have uh without a doubt I'm gonna have a couple what day is it, Sunday? Sunday, I got a handful of shit I got to get done here. I got to go find some more hay tomorrow. And then um, after that, I'm going to have some people here with me who are going to uh, possibly be, be filling in some gaps, all right? They're going to be filling in some gaps. And then what else? I believe shortly, I think 
Our friend Darren is still in the southern U.S. somewhere right now himself. And I think, I got some messages from him. I got to, I got to caught up in a lot of texts and messages from people. But I think, I think his native friend is possibly going to have a sit down with us. And we're going to have a little talk. And this man has seen these beings a lot. He's seen them where Darren had the, the trees getting beat on. And there might be a chance that I'm going to go for a walk there with them. There you go. So that's basically going to be the oh, nearly what the same as what I was going to do in Texas too, right? We'll see what happens. Anyway, what else? You got anybody else sitting here right at fresh on the plate? I don't even know how long I've been sitting here. I don't know how long I've been sitting here, but I hope to God everybody's taking down all the information and they're getting and your wheels are turning. Your wheels are turning, all right? You are working at helping all of us at the same table put these puzzles together, right? Okay, where are we? How long is this one? Hmm? Have I read this? It's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not labeled red, so I'm going to read it. Two visual Sasquatch encounters by two law enforcement officers. Hello, Steve. You said in a recent video that you wanted to hear from LEOs, so here you go. I've been on your channel for some time and have followed your journey as the voice for folks who have encountered these Sasquatch beings. You have my and so many others gratitude for providing a place for the folks to safely share their stories and to share knowledge about this topic with the rest of us. Who I am is not so important, so I'll spare you my background. Other than to say I'm a veteran federal LEO with over 30 years experience. That said, I followed this topic for many years and tried to learn as much about these beings as I could. Only complete idiot would look at the overwhelming and clear evidence of the existence of Sasquatch and still come away saying it is all fake and bullshit. <laughs> Agreed. And appreciate you coming forward, man. I'm ready to share the encounter of two of my friends who are both veteran law enforcement officers with decades of experience. Both men are stand-out professionals and about as honest and straightforward as they come. Both have impeccable credentials and their honesty and candor is absolute. I asked Sam to share the... I asked them to share their stories, and both said, let her rip. Beautiful. Encounter one is from a friend who is still working police, it's who is a still working police sergeant of 20 years, experience in North California. In January this year, he was driving through southern Humboldt County in northwestern California about 8 p.m. when he rounded a corner on the highway at about 45 miles per hour and witnessed a very large being laying sideways on the side of the paved road along the white bog line at the shoulder. When he saw it, he slowed and noticed it was propped up on its elbow and facing away from him. This sounds familiar, might have read it, but who cares? Read it again. But we've had a handful of people say the same thing, laying there. He said it was enormous and thickly muscled, it was brownish in color and approximately seven feet tall. This man has spent hundreds of days in the woods, hunted and been around many bears. He drove around the corner in a state of disbelief at what he had just seen, then turned around to go back. When he came back a couple minutes later, the Sasquatch was gone. Nobody knows why it was laying on the side of the highway, but perhaps it had been struck by a vehicle and injured or dazed. This region in Northern California has had many, many sightings over the years, and he is now a member of the club in a return. The second encounter I'll share is from my closest friend, who is a veteran federal LEO, who was my partner at an agency for several years before he transferred to another federal agency in Washington State. He has lived his life in the woods and knows his business back and front. When the friend in this first encounter shared a story with me, I decided to contact my Washington State buddy, who lives in one of the most notorious locations for Sasquatch sightings and encounters in North America the Mount St. Helens region of the Cascade Range. I just had a feeling and followed your guidance when asking someone about possible encounters. 
I called him on the phone one recent evening, and in a very serious manner, I asked if he had ever seen or heard anything strange while on patrol. He went quiet for a moment and said, Do you mean Bigfoot? I said, Yes. The phone got quiet for a handful of seconds, and he said that what he was about to tell me, he had never told anyone before. And this is his story. In September slash October 2008, while working up in a mountainous area of his patrol sector, he was at a gate and checking on a surveillance camera on a logging road in the early morning when he heard a distinct thud hit the ground somewhere in front of his patrol vehicle, followed by an immediate grunt. He stepped around the back of his patrol vehicle, and 60 feet away, standing on the right of the logging road, was a male Sasquatch. It had just jumped off a steep embankment it had landed in the road on its feet. When my friend saw it, he had that disbelief cycle for a couple of seconds as he watched it walk across the road, or across the logging road, and down into the timber. He told me it scared the shit out of him. But he jumped into his vehicle and drove right over to where it had entered the timber just a handful of seconds earlier, and it was nowhere in sight. Despite a clear line of sight, very little ground cover, though the timber, through the timber for about 100 yards. He described it as very dark, thickly built, and about six feet tall. This friend of mine and I have been in several scraps over the years as partner officers, and I know him to be unafraid of anyone or anything and trust him with my life. He's a very large and powerful man and has that switch to flip when the time comes. When he told me that the encounter scared the shit out of him, I took notice. He's kept this hidden from anyone, knowing for 13 years, until I asked him in a straightforward and respectful way, just as you recommended. Thanks again, Steve. Strength and honor. S.R.J. There you go, man. I appreciate that email big time. I didn't read that one before. That's new. I think you've been waiting, maybe. Waiting a year. <laughs> it's not too bad. This stage of the game. And I hope, you know what, I, I hope you're still here. I'd imagine you probably are. And if you are, could you make sure you send this to your buddy, please? Just just to let him know that uh, we really, truly appreciate his honesty for coming forward and sharing that. And especially saying that, to giving you permission to share with everybody here. Because it, it makes a difference, right? And uh, to let him know that it's safe now. Shit's turned around. The cat's out of the bag, Right? What do you guys think? How many people, how many, I wonder how many, how many people do you guys think have actually seen, heard, felt, whatever? It's a lot. It is so much. I mean, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't matter where I go. People either come up to me and say, yeah, I've seen something, or we'll be in a group of people and I'll crack open the, I'll just ask somebody the same way you do. I, I won't bring up the topic. I'll just say, hey, anybody seen anything kind of creepy in the woods, excuse me, before? And last week was a perfect example. That solid, awesome dude I met, consider a new friend. He asked me, he, he said that, uh, he goes, you know what? I was talking to my friend earlier when I was there. And he said, who, who is he again? What does he do? He didn't have a clue who I was. He didn't have a clue who a lot of mainstream names were or topics online. The guy's just a hardworking, honest man with a bunch of kids and doesn't have time to to waste. So he wasn't familiar with anything online, basically. And then he, uh, I didn't even ask him. And then he came forward and said, look, I'm going to, I had something happen to me in the swamps of Louisiana. I didn't even tell my wife about it. And there you go. There's another one. doesn't matter where I go. There's somebody. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not a huge curiosity of mine, but I just wonder just what the number is, eh? What is the number around the globe of human beings who have seen and heard and know that something really big is going on that we are just not supposed to know about? Man, I wonder what the number is. I would not, I don't have a clue. Do I think it's over a million people? <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt, over a million people have seen, heard, felt, and know. Without a doubt, over a million. Don't you think? How many have come here? 
I don't know. I got it. There's around thirty thousand emails since I since I first said, "Hey, man, I'll share your freaking story. I don't give a shit. I'll do it. Email me." I think around thirty thousand people. Seven to ten million hits a month on this channel. Like ten million, ten million total. Ten million views in thirty days on this channel on this topic. Ten million. How many of those people are sitting there quiet, not telling anybody, but they're looking for the answers, right? And they don't have to come forward as long as they're here learning. That's good. Anyway, I'm babbling. I got to get going. Share my story at howtohunt.com. Get it off your chest. Get it out here. Again, I appreciate the everybody who came forward today through me. And uh, again, to the police officer who just emailed in, make sure you send this to your buddy. Make sure you send him this. And if anything, just tell him to fast forward to the end. And uh, to let him know that we appreciate him. And he's not alone. And there's nothing to be scared of talking about it, right? Yeah. I gotta go in and Dr. Frickin' Sarah's gonna squirt this shit in my eyeballs. It makes it. I'm so tired of putting shit in my eyeballs. I was up all night last night hacking with my throat. You know, shit in the corner. It seems like it's getting better. I'm getting better. I'm not dying. I guess it's not cancer. <laughs> not that that's funny, but... Oh, the horses are kicking around in there. Share my story at howtohunt.com. Get it shared. Get your knowledge out there. I don't give a shit how crazy you think it is. It doesn't matter. Get it shared. I'll be back shortly.